What's happening, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Games and Grabs podcast. I'm Sonny G, here with Finn Steele. Finn, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are you ready to record the best be podcast back. episode ever? I think it should probably be called the best podcast episode ever. Uh, if only we had a soundbite for that. Hmm. Oh. Wow, look at that. Ah, right. Perfect okay, timing. Excellent, yeah. But, you know, on, just on cue. Yeah. I'll we'll panic at this game right next to you. Now playing live. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it's a, a case that they couldn't afford the Hugh Jackman version or they just weren't allowed it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But Panic at this game is cool and good with, with, like, good with the kids and young people. Yeah, that's probably what it is, isn't it? I, I guess <laughs> uh, we'd like to thank Hugh Jackman for the greatest <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah, it probably doesn't work the same. Yeah. I Mom, guess. he's Hugh Jackman. Yeah. <laughs> it's Wolverine. Is that Wolverine? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why is Wolverine singing? <laughs> yeah. uh, good times. Oh, man. So it's good to be back. It is. First time in a while. Yeah, it's first time in a while. Um, I know we say this all the time, but we are going to try and sort of pump out these podcasts on a weekly basis. Yeah. The um, it's just, you know, out. with, with the, you know, the coronavirus and with lockdown and uh, everyone's working patterns being different and all do- all sorts of different kind of stuff. It just makes it really hard sometimes, you know? Yeah. And, you know, we're sorry for that because I know, you know, people do miss the podcast when it's not there. And um, we hope you enjoy this episode. And we hope it gets you through uh, any sort of crappy time that you're going through at the minute. Yes. But we've, we've got we've got heaps and heaps to talk about today. And yeah, a lot of stuff has happened in the past few weeks. Yeah, a Mental. lot of stuff. So it's probably good that we haven't recorded anything because otherwise <laughs> we'd have just been like, yeah, so uh, quarantine. <laughs> yeah, all this cool uh, stuff's and, happening soon. But, uh, and uh, <laughs> like protests yeah. and stuff. Uh, the world's such a crazy place at the minute, right? It's, it's gone mental, isn't it? Madness. It really has. I mean, this year has been a complete write-off. Just today we've had to uh, cancel our wedding. Oh, really? Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So uh, we've had to postpone it until next year now. So, um, yeah, the coronavirus has basically just balls everything up. Yeah, it really has. That really sucks. Um, Yeah, it sucks. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. You know, we have to just sort of make uh, the best we can out of the crappy situation that we've been handed. Uh, Everybody, not just us, you know, we're not the only ones. Of course not. um, You know, we just have to move on and, yeah, just... Keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. I've been quite lucky in some respects because obviously I work retail, so I've still got to go to work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've still got a job and I'm still up to like have money and stuff. Is uh... Yeah, I can consider myself pretty lucky in that aspect too because mm. I've been working from home and uh, just last week I was back in the office. So, um, you know, just just brings that small bit of normality. You never sort of yeah. think, oh, I'm going to be grateful for going back into the office, but <laughs> it does give you that touch of normality that you you really do miss and you, you probably take for granted really yeah yeah definitely but no. so we have got loads to talk about like we I said. do and uh, we'll start as we always do yeah we'll start with what we've been playing because it's been a bit of a gap so um finn's about to pull a list out of his pocket <laughs> uh, as long as jericho's <laughs> thousand and one moves you just made a list um yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess the main one I've been playing, the biggest one would be Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, yeah, I mean, had that come out the last time we did the podcast? Um, I don't remember. It's been so long, I can't remember. Yeah, I think it might have been about to come out, or maybe I just, just came out and I just started it. Something maybe like the that. demo was out. Yeah, yeah, maybe. That could have been it, actually. Yeah. Anyway. But no, I love it. It's uh, Everything about it is like, spot on. Like I couldn't have done it, couldn't imagine it any, uh, done any better than it has been. Um, it's all nods to the original game, all there. Yeah, you've got the music, remastered music, which sounds amazing. Um, as the yeah, it's the gameplay loop, and it's, everything is good. Like the material is still there, but like done in a more modern way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, combat is amazing. Like you got you can switch between characters, which is awesome. Uh, everyone feels super unique. Like Tifa's got the like the hand to hand, the super like fast combos. You got Barrett who's ranged, uh, stuff like that, and. Yeah, just having all the new stuff that added as well. I've got new bosses, new characters, new everything. I love it. I love it, love it. It's really good. Um, I, I have got it and I have been playing it. I, um, the last bit, I did, I'd just be rude. Mm. The bald guy with the sunglasses who looks like every bald guy with sunglasses That's ever. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so I 
did the bit just after that where it sort of opens up again for you to go and do side missions in the bit that you're in. Ah, oh, yeah, with the uh, area. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, and it's really good. You know what? I think it's. I mean, I've only played a very small amount of the the, ver- of the, the original, but with this, it's just it just feels so. It feels so old school, but at the same time, it feels incredibly modern. Yeah, yeah. It's a weird feeling, really, when you play it. Yeah, definitely kept like the original feel of the mm. like original game, and um, I got the ATB system um, and things like that. Also added the classic mode, which just is very similar to the original in some ways. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just really, really good. I don't, I don't yeah, want to go into spoilers, but um, people were a bit iffy on the ending. Uh, I really liked it. I'm in a camp. I really like the ending. Um, I look forward to the next game or how it expands um, from there. Um, I mean, yeah, considering cool. we've, been, we've been waiting 37 years for this one, when do you think <laughs> we'll actually see a part two? Um, I think we'll probably be in our 50s by the time it comes out. Um, <laughs> so not long for me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Hopefully within the next, I'd say at least two years. Oof, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, I, hope, I mean, I hope like 2021, fingers crossed, but I think it'll be early 2022 would be my guess. On the PS5. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't think we'll see it next year. I think 2022 or 2020. I'm assuming they're making it now. Yeah, you gotta think so. Um, because, I mean, they are working on other stuff as well. But, you know, obviously, they have more than one team. Yeah. But, I'm, just, um, I'm curious how know. they're going to handle, like, carrying over progress if they, you know, decide to do that. Because, obviously, you've leveled well, up, you've got what, your material and all that think, stuff. What I think will happen, I mean, I don't know if it's. The thing is, the, not everyone uses it, but obviously PlayStation Plus uses a um, a cloud save. Good point. Uh, thing, so you could, you know, PlayStation Plus is obviously going to be on uh, PlayStation Five as well, and maybe mm. you could just pull your save down. Or, uh, I mean, you, you got to believe there's a way that they'll do it. I mean, they'll figure it out. I mean, come on, technology is pretty awesome these days. Yeah, they'll figure it out. Um, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Or just starting afresh. <laughs> yeah, new crash. material. Yeah, I'm curious how, how that'll work. But I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. We'll find uh, out in 15 years' time. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. But uh, um, one important thing, you got the platinum for it, right? I did. I played through it again on hard mode. Uh, it's pretty difficult. Um, but yeah, I think the main thing is leveling up on normal, like getting all your material leveled up. Uh, mm-hmm. Basically, I just pumped up a load of uh, HP ups and MP ups and made myself, you know, get myself the most health, most health and uh, MP as I could. Uh, plenty of healing yeah. uh, spells and things. Because the main thing is you can't use items like at all on hard mode. Really? Yeah, and you know the benches you sit on to you like sit on to regain your HP and stuff. Um, that only regain uh, gives you back your HP. It doesn't give you back your MP. So you've got to be careful. Ooh. Yeah, you've got to be careful. Uh, you only get your MP back at the end of chapters. So that's rough, but it's manageable. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. I really enjoyed the challenge and yeah really really good that's that's very much your thing though isn't it mm, big time i like i like the challenge i like to figure out this kind of stuff yeah that would, it would i would be pulling <laughs> my quarantine haircut out <laughs> yeah i don't know i could so much use a haircut look at that oh, yeah point. look at this we're on video today actually guys so <laughs> yeah, uh, you know you can see our face it's a little bright where i am but that's because the sun, i've got a massive in my office there's like a massive window <laughs> and even though i've closed the blinds the sun's quite bright outside so it's beaming mm. onto me and i look like um uh you know the light of god is shining on me <laughs> it's god's, not. yeah god's messing around right now 2020 come on god what are you doing to be honest, Give us a if, break. yeah, I'm not going to go into it, but you know, if he was here, he probably would just take this away, I guess. <laughs> probably. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you got the platinum. It's I a did. shame we haven't got a round of applause. I know. If only we had someone here who could uh, give us a round of applause. I'm like, oh wait! Oh. From the heavens. Oh, wow, God, God, that's awesome. Us. Yeah. It's <laughs> like the, the sound bite gods are, uh, you know, are, are really with us today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent great. Um, I can go to the bar just to say that it was the uh, game I played this gem. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> you really think it was? Yeah, I think so. Just from a, like how they've done it and from a, like, a nostalgia standpoint. And like it had to, a lot to live up for. Like, people were expecting a lot from this game. It would have been easy for, like, to disappoint people if they didn't give it like, 100%. Mm. Um, but it completely lived up to it, at least for me. And uh, yeah, I don't think I played anything as good. It gave me like that feeling. That, that game gave me this gen that's good yeah, that is good i mean there has been so many great games this generation and obviously it's, it's all going to be down to personal preference but yeah okay. you know a lot of people loved it um i like it i think it's great i know um viz 
liked it as mm. well. And, you know, it's not really his, you know, type of thing. And even, you know, Chris, who listens to the podcast, uh, you know, was saying in our Discord that when he played the demo, he thought it was really good. Um, so, you know, it, it's probably brought, a, you know, a bigger fan base to Final Fantasy VII as well. Yeah, big time. The fact that, you know, as you say, people who don't enjoy Final Fantasy games typically are, like, really enjoying it, gravitating towards it. And, uh, yeah, it's good. Excellent. Gets more eyes on the products, I guess. Definitely. I mean, it, and to me as well, it definitely feels like a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Mm. Um, just, you know, with how linear it is, because it is very linear. Mm. It's not very open at all. Yeah, that was, that was one of the complaints I saw. But at the end of the day, in Midgar, in the original game, it was very linear. It wasn't until after yes. Midgar where the game like, opened up. So well, The thing is, it's, well, a, it's like a shanty town, isn't it? It's like a slum village. So, yeah. you know, it's very, you can't really have it open. Yeah, exactly, yeah. No, it's good. But yeah, I it was good. It. And I'm, I'm glad good. you enjoyed it. I'm glad you got the platinum. And I'm glad yes. it lived up to your lofty expectations. <laughs> it certainly did. Good times. Um, what else have I played? I've just started The Last of Us um, to try and get it done before The Last of Us 2. Uh, this I'll isn't probably... the first time you've played it, is it? Uh, no, I played it on the PS3 when it came out. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. And I got the um, multiplayer trophies ages ago with uh, oh. with Chris from this called. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, so I'm going for the Baton Trophy. I need to play it two times to get that. Um, you can play it once on hard and once on like super difficult. Uh, I suppose uh, trophies out of the way. Um, but yeah, we need to start it. So I'm still at the start, but like even now, it looks amazing. Like for a PS3 game. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. The thing is though, they've 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 upgraded it. So I mean, it has had uh, PS4 Pro enhancement and it's got HDR and all that stuff. So you know they've they've done literally all they can to make it look as as good as they can. Yeah, big time. But it look, it, the thing is, it looked great on the PS3. Yeah, literally for PS3 game. It's going to be like Last of Us 2. Like Last of Us 2 is going to look amazing uh, for this gen. Uh, like Last of Us 1 looks amazing for that gen. Like, yeah, just... yeah, I mean, from what I've seen, I mean, and I haven't seen much, so I've been trying to avoid as much as possible. Mm, you do. Um, but I mean, it looks phenomenal. Yeah, it looks amazing. Even just from the screens I've seen. I've only seen the 30-second th- trailer, the one where uh, Ellie's playing the song. Mm. Um, you know, and I saw a little bit of gameplay when it was first shown, when the very first gameplay was shown. And uh, I thought it looked you know, fantastic. As it was always going to be, Naughty Dog, you know, they don't make bad games. No. They're not out of bad I can't think of a bad Naughty Dog game. No. That's amazing. Speaking of Naughty Dog, I've also played Crash 2 and 3 to get those uh, plans mm. out of the way. And did you get them? I did. You did? I did. Hold on. <sighs> you, you tell you what, you've got, you've got, oh, why are you so, why are you coming on the uh, <laughs> applause? Uh, I don't know, it's just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't me, it was, just, you know, the crowd watching this right now. <laughs> they, they got excited. They got, they got excited for two Platinums for Crash 2 and 3. Yeah, exactly. Okay, go, go on, go for it. <laughs> okay, I'll do it again. There's two Platinums there. Two on the floor. That was a longer round. <laughs> uh, that was a longer round that, of applause that time. It, I think it was, yeah. It was a up early. We were really into that one. They were really into it. Fair <laughs> play. Um, yeah. But no, great games. A nice challenge. Because it's got to be all the other time trials and things, which are a bit rough. But enjoyable and i enjoyed it a, a bit rough yeah. i remember this stream when you were doing uh, crash one mm. i think crash one i'm not hardest. sure a bit rough quite cuts it yeah crash one was definitely the hardest especially that level they added uh later the oh the level. uh the storm one right, mm. where you're climbing up the tower yeah yeah that was rough that was pretty difficult did it though um but yeah really good really fun like very nostalgic um crash manager 2 was originally like the first game i played on ps1 um okay that's very nostalgic for me I like Crash 2. I think mm. Crash 2 was always my favourite. Yeah. Good game. Need, need, still need to play um, Crash Team Racing. So I keep meaning to get to, but... Oh, I'll yeah, of course, yeah. Um, I said, what else have I been playing? A bit of them, really. What well, I think? Looking down. A bit of Animal Crossing? Like everyone else in the world right now? Yeah, like, uh, everyone's... It's probably the biggest selling game of all time after <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. GTA 5. And GTA 5 is given away for free on the Epic Games scores on BC. Games course, Epic, Epic Games Store, um, which is nuts. Considering it's, it's still like, the highest, one of the highest selling games like every week, giving that away for free is pretty nuts. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I think they make the bulk of their money now off GTA Online, don't they? True. Yeah, very because true. Because everybody owns you know seven or eight copies of <laughs> GTA Five, just like Skyrim. There's like people in their house that just got boxes of Skyrims and GTA Fives. Yeah. Yeah, same. Um, Maybe Resident Evil 4 as well. That's been released on pretty much everything. Yeah, we're coming to PS, um, PS4 soon. If not already. Or PS5. There was talk oh, of getting re- another remake for that. After Resident like Evil 2 and 4. 3. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, I think that will happen. Mm. Considering we've had two and three. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they do it. Because anyway, it's it's already like a similar gameplay as two and three remake. It's pretty rough though. Yeah. Hopefully I mean, they... I played through it, didn't I? Like relative, fairly recently, like mm. a year or so ago, and it was pretty rough. Yeah. I look forward to hearing uh, Ashley scream at us again. No, I, I, I don't. <laughs> See, that's the reason I don't want because I'll, I'll have to play it. Of course, but well, I don't want to hear that. I don't, I don't, I don't need it. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> it was annoying enough the first time. I mean, I just Leon. No, I, don't, I just don't. I don't need it. Yeah, it's a great game though. It's a really good game. Yeah, but one of the best. Um, what else? Oh yeah, it just started um, Astral Chain as well on Switch, which is uh, oh, okay. Excellent. What do you think to it? Yeah, really, really fun. I like it a lot. I like it. it's not just like combat, 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 combat. Yeah, it's like like investigation stuff as well. Um, yeah, it's really fun. I like it. Yeah, another very really good. Game. Uh, I I, th- I think it's good. I've not played through all of it, obviously, but um, yeah, I think it's a, a really cool game. Uh, they've done it. It's quite unique, really. I think. Hmm. Yeah, I like it a lot. One uh, of these uh, Switch games. One of these classic Nintendo exclusive games that are just incredible that we'll never get anywhere else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it for video games that I can remember. Um, how about you? you been playing? Uh, I've been playing all sorts of different stuff, really. I mean, I I, I don't think... Uh, it has been a while since we did this podcast, so I don't think Resident Evil 3 was out at this point. Probably not. Um, so I did Resident Evil 3. Nice. It was only very short, but I really liked it. Uh, I liked it probably more than Resident Evil 2, but mm. I think it was because it was more... It was more action, and it was a bit faster paced. Yeah, that's and, fair. Um, that, I mean, I love Resident Evil 2 as well. In fact, I... Since we last did the podcast, I finished Resident Evil 2 as well. Nice. So I finished Resident Evil 2, um, both Leon and Claire, and then I did 3 when that came out. Cool. Um, and that was great. Really, really good. It's super short. Probably not worth 50 quid, but mm. it's definitely worth waiting for to come down in price. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much why I'm waiting. I don't like to buy too many games right now, just because mm. to save money and also because, you know, backlog. Finish all those games behind me at backlog. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, think it's a better game. Um, it's yeah. good, but I would, I would wait. I mean, it's 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 obviously going to come down in price. Mm. Um, you know, either in the what's left of the summer, probably, or towards the back end of the year. But um, it's one hundred percent worth playing. I mean, if you like the original Resident Evil Three, you'll like it. Uh, the use of the Nemesis, I think, pissed people off a little bit mm. because he was sort of saved for more set piece type stuff. Oh um, yeah, it was used completely different to how. Um, the Mr. X was used in Resident Evil 2. Oh, okay. So it was a lot different. Shame. But um, it, it was really good. They're, they're two very... They're two different games, I would say, Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. Yeah, that's fair. Um, it, also, it, also come, it does also come with um, the Resistance multiplayer mode, which... Um, it does, yeah. Looks, looks interesting. I did play the Alpha ages ago, which eh, it's, it's all right. But yeah, like it looks interesting. I mean, I haven't tried it. It's installed on my PS4, but I haven't, I haven't even sort of... Since I finished the game, I haven't even really considered... Uh, trying it, yeah, that's it's just like four v one, isn't it? It's like a nemesis versus four people, or something yeah, like, that. like, um, like Dead a by daylight, yeah, exactly, kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it sounds interesting. Yeah, I mean, whether they managed to pull it off or not, because you know they're not. The thing with Resident Evil um, is the they're not the most free moving of games. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like the characters, they they are they're quite wooden, really, aren't they? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Not like you can like roll all over the place and all that sort of stuff. They are. It is quite a wooden game. Mm. Not a yeah. bad thing. It's fine. I mean, it works for Resident Evil, but I don't know if multiplayer would really, really work using those sort of mechanics unless yeah. they change them. I mean, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, it does look fun. It does look um, definitely interesting. I'll definitely give it a try once I get. Um, I do get Resident Evil Three. Um, mm. Apparently, it's quite unbalanced, in, like in favor of the survivors more than like the mastermind. Um, okay. But yeah, maybe that'll go fixed in like that and things. I'm sure it will. Yeah. Cool. Uh, um, I finished, finally finished Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Nice. Uh, and in the end, I really enjoyed it, uh, mainly for the gameplay. I still didn't really care a lot for the story, but um, the gameplay was really good. Out of the three um, rebooted, well, ones in the reboot franchise, um, I would say it's probably the best one in cool. terms of gameplay. But I think in terms of story, it's possibly the weakest. Oh, right, okay. I, but I enjoyed it. it. It was fine. Cool. Um, I went back and I finished Rise, Son of Rome. Interesting. Which, um, it's just, uh, what I wanted to do is, is get a few games done that um, I hadn't finished but knew I wanted to. And I knew they were shorter as well. Yeah. Because Rise was about six hours long. Yeah. 
So I knew I could bash that out in just a couple of days. And it was, re- you know what? Uh, I really enjoyed it for how mindless and fun it was. That's lovely. Like, the combat is is cool and it's brutal. It's mm-hmm. not, you know, again, it's not the deepest of gameplay experiences. Um, but it was good. And for a game that was released in 2013, it still looks unbelievable now. Yeah, I saw a screenshot actually recently. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, it's, it, it's, so it's worth playing if, you know, if you've got six hours to kill and you just want to go chopping people's arms off and <laughs> doing sort of cutie style combat. It's good. Cool. Uh, yeah, I might actually. I also, also played through uh, Watch Dogs on stream. Thanks to me losing oh, a bit. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Look, me and you both know that it's not the world's greatest game. Yeah, it's fine. It was just, you know, it pretty much exactly how it was. It was just, it just mindless kind of fun. But nothing super special. Um, I'm actually working on, no. yeah, I'm actually working on um, like an edited um, like video kind of thing for uh, YouTube. It should be fun. Should be uh, funny, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed my playthrough of it. I mean, it, it it was it was it was good. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's not the world's greatest game. <laughs> it isn't uh, nowhere near. But it, it was fun enough. Um, obviously, it set the you know, it started the mechanics that make Watch Dogs 2 so good. Yeah, I, I, I do want to play Watch Dogs 2 at some point. And that's another one I've had it. since, it's like... super, super good. Yeah, another one I've had since almost release and just haven't played. No, that's fair. <laughs> um, I'm um, sure there is other stuff that I've played, uh, but I've just really forgotten. Yeah, same. To be honest. <laughs> uh, because, because every day is the same at the minute. Uh, you know, when you pick up the controller and play, you just sort of play and that's it. Yeah. Like, um, for me... One thing I... One thing I did try that I loved was um, the Iron Man VR demo. Ah, uh, yeah, that was cool. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a bit hard to play in my place because um, you need quite a bit of distance from the camera, and I'm living in quite a small yeah. place, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's good. One well, play was uh, a lot of fun. Might get, yeah, I, I, I love point. the way they've done it. I think uh, the way they've sort of used the uh, the move controllers to make you feel like you are Iron Man and doing mm. the sort of the hand movements and stuff that he does if he was to fly or you know, float and shoot and all that sort of stuff. But I think they've done it really, really well. Um, it's the, and it didn't kill me, which I thought it was going to. <laughs> oh yeah. I can, yeah. I know problems with the version sickness, but it's good that you, you yeah. didn't have the problem. Yeah. Not at all. I mean, when, cause at the start of the demo, obviously you take off. Mm. Uh, it obviously encourages you to sort of fly around the, uh, bit, near, uh, you know, around his house. And as soon as he took off, I was like, Oh wow. Okay. So this is, not what I was expecting at all. I was expecting it to be um, like real difficult in terms of uh, like jolty camera and the fact that you're moving but not moving. Uh, I was expecting it to be a real issue, but it, it wasn't an issue whatsoever. And uh, I'm pretty grateful for that, it must be said, because uh, I love me some Iron Man and mm. I'm super happy that uh, this is an experience that I'm actually going to get to play and enjoy properly. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, speaking of VR, I really, really want to play that new Walking Dead game that just came out. Oh, yeah, that looks really That's good. really yeah. good. I want mean, to play that. Saints and Sinners, is it? That's, That's what it's the one. Called? Yeah, it's been out on PC yeah. for a while. Um, finally bought the VR to like out of nowhere. Um, yeah, really looking forward to playing that. Yeah, that looks really good. Uh, I, I, I saw the trailer for it and I've seen a little bit of gameplay, but that looks great. The, the combat looks insane. Yeah, so cool. Just like you pick up anything super and brutal. smash them and everything. Um, I've not long down, I've downloaded the. Um, the next generation DLC for Star Trek Bridge Crew. Oh yeah, which is a real little guilty pleasure of mine <laughs> on the VR. Fair play. Um, it's awesome. Star Trek Bridge Crew is so much fun. Nice. And I don't even like Star Trek. <laughs> no, I'm gonna say I'm not much of a Star Trek guy, but yeah, um, I remember like, I used to watch the Next Generation with my dad back in the day. But I think that's why I wanted to try the DLC because it's cool to be able, be able to look around the Enterprise and all that kind of thing. But yeah, um, yeah that's a that's a cool little game. It was on offer as well. I think the whole bundle was on offer for like nine quid. Wow, bargain. So that's the game and the next generation DLC. So cool, worth it. Good stuff. But yeah. Otherwise, I've been I've been doing a lot of I've been playing a lot of sports games. Been you know sports. Uh, there's no football been going on, so I've been playing a lot of pairs, a lot of FIFA. Uh, that's been taking up a lot of my time. Um, but yeah. Otherwise, uh, I'm sure I've been playing other stuff, but I just I don't know. Not 100. percent Yeah. Same. Um, but cool. But either way, you know, gaming's. Uh, I think gaming has been a big. Um, it's been a big part of, you know, dealing with the quarantine and dealing with the lockdown. Mm, um, and, you know, it. if you're a non-gamer, it's, it's something you probably wouldn't understand, but it's it's something that really does get you through. Yeah, big time. It just takes your mind off it, takes your mind off everything, just like and get lost in like the world of video games. Definitely, yeah. Yes. Yeah, which is which is awesome. 
good stuff. Uh, speaking of PS4 and PlayStation in general, I had a lot of PlayStation news recently. Specifically, that PlayStation Five. I, I hadn't noticed. I mean, um, <laughs> to be honest, my my Twitter feed is filled with jizz, so it's hard to <laughs> to be able to scroll past it all. Pretty much, yeah. Um, but yeah, so the big news is they've finally shown off the PS Five and what that's going to look like. Mm. Um, what do you think? What's your thoughts on it? Um, I I'm not a hundred percent into the look of the console. I think it's too futuristic looking for me. That's fair. It's definitely um, different. I don't I don't hate it. I just um, I want it to fit on my TV stand, <laughs> and it's long. Good point. It is very long. I don't know if it's going to fit, so I might have to get a new TV stand. But <laughs> um, in comparison to the way that the Xbox Series X looks, I prefer the way that that looks because it's you know more compact and just a black box. But you know, it's it's super ambitious. Mm. The look that they've gone for completely different to any of the, the other consoles they brought out because you know, obviously the PS One was a little grey box, but then the PS Two, Three, and Four, they've all followed a similar sort of design model. Yeah, pretty much, it's like yeah, black color ob- obelisks. Mm. Um, yeah, it's very I different. Wish the PS Five was black. Yeah, I'm hoping they release a black version as well because I definitely prefer a black version. Mm. Um, yeah, well, I, admit, I, I quite like it. I think it's. I don't mind the futuristic look because uh, I don't think it looks cool. Uh, obviously, I've given you uh, two versions to choose from. We've got the uh, physical version and the mm. digital only version. Um, it's one of those things where they clearly came up with the design of the digital version first, and like, like made made the um, the disc version like added that later. Just had like a lump on the side <laughs> for the yeah. uh, disc. <laughs> um, um- it's interesting that they are bringing out a digital version. I mean, obviously, Xbox have tried it and it didn't really work. Mm. But it definitely makes sense. Um, um, a lot of people play digital only. Um, yeah, big time. Um, but I'm more, yeah, I'm more of a collector. If they get behind me, so I'll of still course, be playing, yeah. uh, you know, virtual games. Um, but yeah, I think it makes absolute sense to do that. Um, I think it's that's probably the version that's going to sell the most. Um, you think it will? Yeah, yeah, big time. See, I'm not sure. I mean, a lot of people, you know, will have. I mean, most of my games are digital. Hmm. But I do have a few physical games as well. But you, it's whether you're going to go back to. I mean, prime. You know, usually I would prefer just to just to play digital games because I can't be asked to get up and change discs. <laughs> yeah, that is the long and the short of it. Yeah, it's I easier to just come out of your game than go straight into another game without having to get up off my, off my fat ass <laughs> and change discs. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. I find that sometimes. Like I'll switch in between uh, Final Fantasy and um, something else, Crash. I think. And every time I thought, oh, get up, <laughs> change this. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. We've got, the, we've got lazy, lazy in, our old age, in our old age. Well, that's it. Plus, you know, getting off the sofa is hard now. It is. It takes so much effort. You know, you, the older you get, the harder it gets. Yeah. Especially when you at least sprain your ankle at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't do, don't do things like that. Yeah, that was stupid. It's bad times. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, but overall, yeah. I mean, the, I thought the. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't hate the look of the PS5. No, no. Um, you know, but I'm not. It's not really what I would go for. That's fair. But um, um, I didn't really like the controller either. I thought the controller just looked okay. Really? Yeah, I, I quite like it. I like the but idea. It obviously of... goes with the console, so hmm. you know, or instantly it's fine. Yeah, I, I quite like the idea of like haptic feedback and like the triggers being all like cool and stuff. I can't remember the exact word they call, they used, but yeah, I like I the idea. Think of... Cool was the word they used. <laughs> now I can't remember where they use, but uh, just I just like the idea of it. Like after you get like feedback from the game, like is it a yeah, phone? I like that. Gone? I like the uh, the haptic feedback thing. I mean, my f- my phone has it. Oh really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. So Fancy. it's um, I think it's definitely it's definitely a cool feature. Mm. I don't know if the Xbox controller or anything has that. Um, yeah. I haven't been paying attention. If I'm being perfectly honest, I just <laughs> yeah, sort of see it and I'm like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking and more it's... of a Sony fanboy these days. Um, that's fair. No, that's completely fair, and it's understandable because. Obviously, with this generation, Sony have just been, they've, you know, they've probably not put a foot wrong. Yeah, exactly. They've been completely, like, knocking it out of the park. Like, last gen, I'd say, I was definitely more of an Xbox guy, like, mm-hmm. Xbox 360. I love achievements. I still, like, I still prefer the achievement system over trophies, if I'm, you know, to yeah. be honest. Um, but yeah, Sony's just, you know, when, you know, Sony started to release, like, all these awesome exclusives, I was like, okay, I'll probably start playing PlayStation more, and then mm-hmm. over time, it spent more and more. PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, Xbox have been, you know, probably over reliant on the likes of Halo and and Gears of War and Forza. Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, for an Xbox fan, that's fine. But are they system sellers? No, they're mm. probably not. I mean, Forza is great. Halo has been around forever, and Gears, Gears is uh, for me a, a franchise that probably should have stopped with 
uh, three. Yeah, maybe. I see because from. they they told that story and it was a great story. And the thing is with it, they they didn't they didn't change the gameplay. And they were like, oh, it's, you know, it's a new gears, it's a new gears, but it didn't feel like a new gears. Yeah, it, it felt still... like gears one. Exactly, it's not, not changed at all, really, has it? Um, no, not really. And it's a shame because you know I really like gears, and I'm sure the story is really good, but it's very it's hard to really make yourself sit down and want to do cover and shoot constantly. Where you know yeah. I like variation, I like traversal, I like climbing and running and jumping and all that sort of shit, you know. And yeah, cause like, uh, gears the... just doesn't give you that. No, it's like the best time we've done this now. It's like it's starting, it's starting to get old now. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Also with Halo, I, I mean, I love Halo, but with the more recent games, they've not been as near as good as like one, two, three, and uh, Reach. They're kind of going down in quality no, a little probably bit. Probably not. I mean, the the best thing they've done is the in terms of Halo on Xbox One is the Master Chief Collection. Mm, yeah. Because all the games have come out and they're they're remastered, almost you know remade, and they look fantastic and they play fantastic. And the best of it all is they keep adding to it. So they've added Reach, they've added ODST and awesome. um, all those games. So you can go, I mean, there's a wealth of Halo content to go back and play, which is great. But, yeah, big time. you know, I mean, Halo 5 was fine. Yeah. Just fine. I didn't you know, play, all the way wasn't... I played most of it, but not, I kind of got tired of it by the end of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the campaign wasn't really that great. Mm. Um, I did play a fair amount of multiplayer and I thought that was good. Yeah. But, you know, there's no, there's no real... You know, like with with PlayStation, you've got those franchises like Uncharted. You've got The Last of Us. You know, even Grand you know Grand Turismo is a household name, even if the last few games, you know, haven't really been up to the standard that Grand Turismo set when it first came out. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you add exclusives like Spider Man, and you know, you, you bring The Last of Us in there, and uh, God of War, and Horizon, and all these, you know, all these games are just they're enormous experiences that you know they're almost they're they're must plays. They're not. Mm. They're not just these. Oh, you know what? That that could be cool to 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 knock about on for a couple of hours. Say, like Crackdown would be. Yeah, like, yeah Crackdown's exactly. fun to play for a few hours, but again, it's it's ultra repetitive and it's not really telling you a story. Yeah, I don't know what it's like. Crackdown three is a lot like Crackdown one and two. I'm not really involved. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun and it's nice to look at, but I don't I don't know what the story is, and I've played over half of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So good. You know, you know, I have no idea what the story is. Just, just <laughs> taking back districts and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. you know, when you compare the two consoles, um, in terms of in terms of games, you know, the the the, the PlayStation wins hands down. There's, there is no there's no argument about it. You yeah, know, there's, there just isn't. Um, I mean, I, I prefer the tro- the achievement system on Xbox. That's why I play Xbox for you know third parties and stuff. Yeah, makes sense. Um, makes sense. You know, I'm not, and I will never ever sit here and say Xbox has amazing exclusives because it doesn't. No, not uh, right now. It does not. You know, yeah, they've obviously bought a shitload of studios, and you know they're looking to rectify that because obviously they've, they know they have to. Is the is basically the long and short of that. Yeah, big time. Um, I say at the start of last gen when they announced the Xbox One, they focused way too much on like this. You can, you can plug this into your TV and what's mm-hmm. films and sports. And I found an, an old Facebook uh, post I made when it first got announced. It's like, yeah. <laughs> we've been super salty about it. I was like, man, seven years ago, I was, in, I was even more of an arsehole than I am now. Uh, <laughs> it's hard, it's uh, hard to imagine that as well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, man, seven years, a long time. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Uh, but now, now I'm, I'm looking forward to both releases, to be honest. Um, as I'm more of a PlayStation guy, but I'm looking forward to seeing what Xbox has in store. Um, yeah, you know, I, I really hope they come through with the exclusives because, you know, they seemingly have the talent to do it, um, but they need to not fall into the trap of trying to copy what PlayStation are doing. Because mm. copying isn't the way to go because, you know, PlayStation is known now for these great story-driven, cinematic, incredible experiences. Yeah, big time. But, you know, doing the same with Xbox probably isn't the way to go. You need to figure out something that's missing in the market and make that your thing. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Because PlayStation already has those things, you know? It already has the the God of Wars, The Last of Us, Uncharted, all these story driven things. But you know, and that is missing on Xbox. Don't get me wrong, it is. But to go go ahead, create your own mascots and straight up copy what they're doing is not the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so they need to find their own spin on it and make it their own and give reason a Give people a reason to 
say, oh, okay, you know, I have to play that game because it just looks, it looks like I can't miss it, that type of thing. Yeah. No, you're right. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what they can do. I was going to maybe focus on multiplayer more because so, you know, PlayStation well, exclusive think, don't really have I, multiplayer. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, you're right. I think the Sony games, I mean, they used to shoehorn multiplayer into everything. Yeah, like Last of Us. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Uncharted. I mean, they don't, them games, they don't need multiplayer. No. Even God of War Ascension had multiplayer. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, no one needs that. But, you know, we, I've always found Xbox Live to probably be a bit more stable than the uh, PlayStation Network in terms of multiplayer. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, I think, yeah, you, you, you could sort of um, go multiplayer-centric on Xbox even and give a give a short campaign as well. I mean, Jesus, it works for Call of Duty every year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, time. you know, you, you can create those shorter story experiences, but also give a, a substantial multiplayer. Maybe that could be their way to go. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe work with them, like, with Halo and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So Gears has a multiplayer, which, I mean, it always has, so you can't really say they've shoehorned that in, but... Um, yeah, you know that kind of thing. Like, but just be inventive. Don't copy. Just be be inventive. Take your time with the games. You don't need to rush them out. Mm. Like yeah, just, Pal- the Pilot Infinite has like uh, multiplayer as like more evolved version of multiplayer. Like Halo Two was known for being the multiplayer game back in the day. Mm-hmm. The Pilot Infinite can do that again for the for next gen. Um, I think that would be, be a big deal for uh, Xbox. I agree. Yeah. Mm. I agree. I think what also could be quite... I mean, obviously, there's a lot of talk of Fable making a return. Oh, really? Mm, yeah, being made by the people that... Um, some of the team that are behind the Forza Horizon game. So, obviously, if they can create a world, you know, that looks like Forza Horizon, With but Fable. it's Fable. Wow. That'd be I good. mean, come on. I really enjoyed Fable back in the day. I mean, that would be... That that would be... That would be a huge deal. Yeah, big time. <laughs> No, no, that's a beloved Fable. franchise that has bypassed this entire console generation. Yeah, it really has. Um, I think like the last, the third game wasn't um, as well received as the, not the first two. Mm. Um, what's the third game I'm thinking of two? Don't remember. Uh, but, three is the not as popular one. Yeah. Two's really good. Yeah. Yeah, but I like these games back in the day. Um, for sure, one of the uh, highlights for Xbox uh, last year. So we get make a new one for sure. I uh, definitely want to check that out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's going to be one of those. It, it's definitely something that uh, I would I would be excited to play. Mm. Um, but you know, it, it's one of those. They have to make it they, they, as long as they do it right. Don't rush it out. Show it at their next reveal. Just yeah. say, look, this is what's coming. Give them some. Give people something to be excited about. Yeah, Show what absolutely. you're working on. Give us something to be excited about. Give Xbox owners a reason to stay, mm. and you know, then build on it from there. Definitely, I agree. Because PlayStation now has that that core fan base that are going to move on from PS4 to PS5 naturally because of the games that you know they've already been shown. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which we should probably talk about. Yeah, speaking of the new games uh, shown, um, set up a new uh, Horizon uh, sequel. Mm-hmm. Uh, still haven't played the first one. Again? Uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Or something? Forbidden, yeah. um, I can't remember. I've got it here. Hold on. Hmm. Um, just doesn't say it's the new, the new ah Forbidden West. Okay, yeah. yeah. So Horizon Forbidden West. I mean, that'd be awesome. You've not played the first one yet, have you? Uh, no, still not. I will play it at some point, probably after um Last of Us two or one. Okay. Yeah, I'll play it. Probably. It's good. I mean, you, you, it's one of those. That is a that is one of those must plays. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's it's just. I mean, I know I I'm a fine one to talk because so I I only finished it this year. <laughs> Fair play. But um, it was it was it's just truly phenomenal. Yeah, I actually bought the DLC for it as well a while ago. It was on the sale. So I'll oh, the play Frozen Wilds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yet to play that. Actually, I need to. I might steal that off you and play that. Good idea. That's supposed to be really good. Yeah, it's supposed to be fantastic. Yeah, but yeah. um, yeah, that's one of the games you you know you really have to play. And the new one will be great. I'm not sure how much mm. of that was gameplay that we saw, but yeah. If any of it, but you know, I'm I have no doubt that it will look phenomenal like the first one does. I mean, the first one is um, probably you know, well, it's easily one of the best looking games of the current generation. Yeah, big time. Awesome. Uh, they also showed off a new Bash and Clank game, mm. uh, Rift Apart. It's very cool. Um, Looks great. Love the last one. Yeah, me too. Um, they showed off a lot of the, like the loading times of the SSD, 
like every time they mm-hmm. went through a portal, it like loads for a few seconds and then boom, you are right into a new, yeah, that's completely awesome. new area. It looks amazing as well. Yeah. Um, that's I think Lang's always a fun game. Always a fun time. Yeah, and the last one was brilliant as well. Mm-hmm. Like it was so good. It was just like a, it was like playing a Pixar movie. And obviously, this one is gonna, you know, improve. To be, I mean, I'm not sure you can improve on the animation as much. Yeah, but, that's you know, fun. with the you know with 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 the lack of load times and all that sort of stuff, it's gonna make a huge difference. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a big deal next gen as well. Just like mm-hmm. load time to be able to instantly get I think into that's a the game. biggest thing. Yeah, like, like because uh, we, graphically games are, st- are amazing now. Mm. So, but you know, it's about advancing the technology and you know, making things that are happening now not happen going forward. Yeah, like load times, for example. Yeah, exactly. Looking forward to that. Big time. Um, was well, so I was speaking of Gran Turismo earlier. We've got a new uh, Gran Turismo Seven was showing off. It's very pretty. Yep. Oh yeah, it'll be it'll be good. Yeah. Definitely. Um, the thing with Gran Turismo at the minute, I always get excited for it I build myself up think oh this is going to be really good look Gran Turismo <laughs> then it comes out and it's just okay yeah it's one of those games that's definitely for like racing enthusiasts and car enthusiasts um, which I'm not really so I'm not really uh, oh, checking the games fair. out I played mm-hmm. the like Gran Turismo 2 I think on PS2 which mm-hmm. is really good which I really enjoyed um, uh, Gran it- Turismo 2 was a PS1 game Gran Turismo 3 A spec was the PS3 2 one that's PS2, the one yeah. that's the one yep yeah. Um, cover. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's Peter the soundtrack. That's it, yeah. Yeah, that's why I remember it mostly. <laughs> that's what everyone remembers the Peter soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, good times. But yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. I'm sure, like uh, people are, like uh, driving sims to love it. Oh, it'd be great. I mean, I what, the one thing I do love about Gran Turismo and always have is the stylish menus. Oh yeah. Uh, I really love that, and like the the porno jazz music <laughs> that they have on the menus. I always love that. Uh, so I mean I, I know that Gran Turismo 7 will be good and I, I know it will look exceptional um, at the minute to me it just looks like another racing game because they all look the same yeah, but, pretty much. You know, but you know when they show the menus and stuff it does look like Gran Turismo and it will be Gran Turismo and that's it that's exactly it. good stuff and what I'm excited for is a completely new remake of uh, Demon Souls yes the original um, Dark uh, Blood what would it call it? <laughs> uh, like the whole new gen- genre invented by uh, Demon Souls. Yeah. Um, it's really, really good. It looks great as well. Yeah. It looks so good. Um, completely made, um, remade from the ground up. Uh, and the environments that have shown up looks like amazing. Yeah. It looks really, really cool. The, you know, it, it looks super pretty. I mean, I won't be playing it. Fair. <laughs> because it will destroy my life. <laughs> A lot of broken uh, controllers. Um, There'll be a lot of anger for sure. <laughs> I mean, I've I've calmed down a lot gaming wise. You know, I don't sort of get angry at games anymore. But I'm yeah. pretty certain that yeah, you know, that would tip me over the edge. <laughs> yeah, Soulsborne. That's the word I was thinking of earlier. Um, yeah, the first ever Soulsborne. He invented the entire genre. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to play that again. Like the same way. When are we through. looking at? 2021. Um, yeah, it's got to be. I think it's gonna be one of the earlier games for uh, PS5. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can't wait. So good. It's almost because yeah, it came out of nowhere as well, like no fanfare. Like first saw it on like on the internet saying, "Oh, this game's pretty good, actually." Yeah, I played it. Was like immediately addicted to it. I was like, "Oh my god, this is so good! I need more of this." Yeah, and, that, and you know, there's so many games of its type now, but it's cool that they're bringing the original back. I think again, you know, bring it to a, a new audience because a lot of people probably obviously wouldn't have played it back on PS3. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely one of the more obscure uh, ones of the uh, franchise so yeah I mean I, I think Bloodborne probably brought a lot of people to that genre definitely and that's what made sort of that and Dark Souls 3 such huge successes when they came out um, but I, you know I, th- I, th- I think this will do really well yeah me too can't wait um, I think it's about it's a bunch of like smaller games as well um, but those are sort of like the biggest ones um, Spider-Man dude oh yeah Spider-Man Miles Morales one yeah, so there was a lot of confusion about it uh, the day after the PlayStation event, mm. but people people not knowing uh, whether it was a new game, whether it was an expansion to the current game, because you know somebody said something and it was you know words to the effect of um, that it was the original game remastered and mm. a substantial expansion of it. Yeah, I saw that as well, but um, which suggested that. It, they were rebringing. They were bringing out Spider-Man again, remastered for mm-hmm. PS5. It would have just been enhanced, obviously, 
it looks phenomenal doesn't need remastering yeah, um, and then bringing out this dlc with it um you know it's just another expansion yeah it turns out that's not the case and what it is is its own expansion and they are um remastering the game world that is already there yeah and improving upon it to make this new substantial expansion yeah of so that the, world yeah like that enchanted game i can't remember the name of um lost and uh no actually that's not what it's called is it <laughs> i can't remember what it's called it's the one with um chloe and stuff yeah that yeah, one, yeah, that one. I can't remember. Cool. Lost Legacy. That's it. <laughs> that's the one. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like that. A smaller, smaller game with like the same like engine and things. New characters. Yeah, like uh, Infamous First Lot. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was that was the one that instantly sort of sprung to mind when I saw it. When I saw the release date coming out this year, I was like, "That's not a full game. No way." Yeah. You just know it's not. I mean, it's June now. So <laughs> holiday twenty twenty. You got six months. I mean, they could have been working on it for ages, but it's unlikely. Yeah. So um, it'll come out and it'll be, you know, eight to ten hours and that, that's fine. Yeah. It looks really good. I mean, you know, half, half as good as the last Spider-Man game will be amazing. Oh, God, yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. Stoked for it. Awesome. Also showed off, like, the boot screen, which is, like, nothing, but it's, like, loads up super fast, like, compared to, like, PS4 and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just lots of, lots of cool stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, they showed off a ton of accessories as well. Please mm. buy our stuff, which, you know... <laughs> Uh, they showed off a new camera. Uh, they showed off a headset, a controller dock. A remote. A media remote. Sweet. Cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We thought to not buying that. Yeah. Um, but no, it looks What's really excited for. What's your price prediction? My what? Price prediction. Ooh, um, I don't know, to be honest. Um, it's got to be the close is, to... With the, cl- with the current economic climate, mm. how much can they really afford to sell it at yeah um they're gonna they're gonna go as low as possible they're gonna have to yeah i think it's gonna be close to let's just 500 pounds then uh yeah yeah i think i i think you're probably looking between 450 and 500 yeah maybe 450 digital and that'll be the same as xbox as well yeah yeah maybe 450 for digital and maybe 500 for uh uh, the big the big boy Yeah. yeah i could see that yeah. Um because obviously, you know, you can pre-register your interest and stuff for it now. You can put placeholder pre-orders down and stuff and no price has been announced or actual release date, but you gotta believe, I mean, it'll be around the middle of November. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. A bit yeah. of Christmas and stuff. Definitely. So I mean in ge- in general, are you excited? Yeah, big time. I'm always excited to start of like new gens and see what's coming next. Mm-hmm. Like the future of gaming. Um Yeah, don't quarter, can't wait. Yeah, me too. I'm excited for I'm excited for both to see what both you know bring to the table. Yeah, um, like I said, I mean, I want Xbox to step their exclusive game up, and you know, they, they've they've got a foundation there in terms of. Uh, I mean, the user interface isn't changing from Xbox One to the Xbox Series X. Oh, really? They're just making improvements to it to fit the new console, which is is fine with me because I do like the Xbox user interface. It's it's it it's very it's functional. It works, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, but you know they, they you know the Game Pass is, is a phenomenal service and has been a huge success for Xbox. Yeah, big time. So you know they've, they've, there's foundations there for them to be successful, um, and they've definitely started this next generation better than they started the current generation. Oh yeah, just a bit. Yeah, so the focus is on power and games, mm. not fucking live TV through your Xbox <laughs> and sports games. Yeah, oh, which man. was you know. Not the they they know that it was. They know that it sucked. <laughs> just a they bit. They know that it did. That's so weird. Yeah, it's so weird. It's just a weird way to go from the most one of the most successful consoles ever in the Xbox 360 <laughs> to thinking that this is what people wanted. Yeah, I take... mean, they've, they've redeemed themselves towards the back end of this generation. Oh, but yeah. when the Xbox One S came out, mm. uh, and they you know put it at a really low price point and bundled it with games and Game Pass started coming out, that's when. You know, it, the tide, not tide started to turn because that's not what happened, but <laughs> things started to look a bit brighter for Xbox. Yeah. In terms of what they've got going forward for the future and stuff. So, um, you know, I think, you know, PlayStation will still sell better. I yeah. don't see that changing at all. 
yeah, it's a good faith from this gen will definitely carry over to next gen, for sure. Yeah, I, I think the success will carry on. I mean, I think price will be a huge thing for people. Mm. But, you know, uh, does it matter these days? I don't know. Does it matter? People are going to buy these consoles anyway, <laughs> probably. I yeah. mean, I probably will. You will. But I, I don't see the, I don't see the tide shifting as much, but I expect it to be closer. Yeah, hopefully. I think Xbox know what they did wrong and like, learning from it, for sure. Could, of course, yeah. And they know what they have to do to get better. Yeah. Um, Sony have got that you know that solid foundation in place and they're good to go from the off whereas xbox they've got to build that trust back they've got to build that fan base back uh, mm. that they lost from the 360 uh, as though those people went over to the ps4 yeah, so there's, exactly. a, there's a lot that they've got to do and that's why I, I don't see xbox going back on top um this coming generation but i do think what they will have is a solid uh solid console with you know a it, it'll play third-party games better, probably, or whatever. I don't know. Who knows? But, and the, it's, what they need to do is build themselves now a solid library of exclusives that can carry on going forward for generations. Yeah. Not keep relying on Halo, Gears, Forza. Exactly, yeah. New new exclusives. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Good yeah, stuff. For sure. But it's, it's, it's a super exciting time. You know, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, feels like it's come around mega mega quick oh yeah time's sped up for sure <laughs> it's the oh, last uh, few years it's uh, yeah it feels weird that we've been locked down for like three months yeah it feels like yesterday didn't it? and counting yeah yeah mental it is mental cool i think that's about it do you think for... do, you, do you think the games new the new games consoles will be the greatest consoles ever um i do think they'll be pretty <laughs> missed it but yeah i think it'll be pretty pretty uh yeah, I tried. I don't want to make it say great. Oh, you but, tried. You yeah. tried. Give yourself a round of applause. Yeah, yeah. okay, hold on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think there'll be the consoles we'll ever have. There oh, excellent. Yeah. There you go. You're fully within yourself. Just cut it out. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll fix it. Splice. In post. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of splicing. Uh, fun. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, the old PS5 news, I think. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, we'll keep talking about the ps5 as more stuff comes out and mm. you know while nintendo keep being silent <laughs> pretty much um but yeah the switch has got a long way to go yet it's going to change yeah, it's selling so many still i mean yeah. you've pretty much not been able to buy it during lockdown wow because every man and his dog and <laughs> their dog's best friend and the dog's family they've all been playing animal crossing <laughs> exactly yeah. Uh, yeah it's really great to be fair nintendo don't even know what 4k is <laughs> yeah uh, I don't. I don't really care. They need it. I, I never thought they needed it. No, it's like with, with the Wii. They didn't even bother with HD. It's like what's well, the PS2 graphics, HD, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Well, really good give your nan a Wii remote and let her play tennis. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's what we need. She doesn't need HD. She can barely see anyway. Fun <laughs> uh, times. Great times. Yeah. The I love times. the Wii. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Wii's great. The Wii's really fun console. Um, Wii Sports is still one of the best sports games ever made. It really is. <laughs> so fun. Yeah, and the other one. Uh, Wii Sports Resort. Yeah, that was good too. Yeah. I like disc golf. Oh, yeah. Enjoyed that a lot. We need to break out the Wii at some point. Do some streams. Yeah. Need to break out a Wii. Yeah, break, break out a Wii's. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Plus, you can play GameCube games on a Wii. You can. If you've got the right one. Yeah. That's awesome. It really is. It's amazing. I keep forgetting yeah. it, actually. Now my uh, GameCube set up. I've also got my Wii set up. I'm like, wait, I'm going to play GameCube games on my Wii. What am I doing? Yeah, because it was backwards compatible with all of them, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Decent. Yeah. Good stuff. Maybe that is the greatest console of all time. Yeah, I think so. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Speaking of the greatest things ever, we had uh, Backlash on Sunday. We did yesterday. have Backlash on Sunday. And it's this. had uh, a really interesting build. <laughs> it really has. Very strange. Um, really strange um, I mean you you put a lot of pressure on yourself and make yourself look incredibly fucking stupid in the same breath by coining something the greatest whatever ever mm, the greatest wrestling match of all time with Ed and Randy Orton um, I mean I'm really enjoying yeah. the match to be fair but it wasn't the greatest match ever um, I, it was fine yeah. it, it was a good match 
But I like. Just... It was. A, I would go for it. So it was a great match. Yeah, but I don't understand what they were going for. Like expecting some sort of twerp. Like I don't know. Nothing really. It's just a match, really. A good match. Yeah. Strange. Yeah, it's weird, really. I mean, uh, to bill it the great, team, gr- the greatest wrestling match of all time, really with nothing to support it. So th- there was literally nothing to support it. Like no, no previous really. I mean, I wouldn't even consider Randy Orton. Edge's greatest rival. No. John Cena probably is. That's yeah, a better that's rivalry than Randy Orton versus Edge. Yeah, probably. They've only got history because but you know, okay, one of them yeah. threw the other one out of the Royal Rumble. Oh, yeah. Um, but no, I thought Backlash altogether was a decent enough show. It wasn't amazing by any means, but it was alright. I thought wrestling-wise it was really good. Yeah. Uh, speaking of um, amazing matches... Um, Daniel Bryan that's AJ Styles on SmackDown last week. Holy shit, what a match. Oh More god, that, so good. I mean, you know, they they are you know, two of the best wrestlers in the world today. Big time. There's no doubt about it. One hundred percent they are. They could have called that the greatest and, match of all time. <laughs> I've been more, yeah, they could have called that. Charlie Caruso could have gone in what could be if what was always making me laugh <laughs> is when the commentary were like, Some say that this is you know, th- this is the greatest wrestling match of all time. Who? Who yeah. is saying that? Who are these people that yeah. it's been, it's you're, been. you're making up? Yeah. Vince is saying it to himself. <laughs> they are calling it they. Who are they? <laughs> they don't know shit. Uh, <laughs> Nobody's calling it that. Yeah. That's great. Crazy. Um, it also puts a lot of pressure on Edge and Randy Orton to deliver. It's like an insane amount of pressure, especially on the guy who hasn't wrestled a proper match in nine years. Yeah. Very strange. Uh, speaking They're of incredibly bizarre, yeah. Speaking of, apparently Ed's uh, tore his bicep in that match as well. Yeah, I heard which, that. Yeah, really sucks. Um, poor guy. So that's him out for, an, you know, a long, long time again. It could be months. Yeah, unlucky. Um, yeah, that really sucks. I mean, what what do you think to the direction of WWE recently? Because obviously, you know, things have changed drastically. I think since, you know, no crowds. Yeah, I like the fact that they're bringing in some people, even it's just like, like de- developmental people, just to have some, yeah. some sort of crowd there. Oh yeah, the, I fake, think, the I think, fake crowd noise during well, that match was uh, god awful. <laughs> I could have done without that. Uh, uh yeah, I I could have done without it as well. Mm. I don't think they, I don't even think it was done well. I, I think yeah. the organic reaction of the performance center guys would have just been enough. Yeah, because like the rest of the show just had the performance center guys, and then that one match, <laughs> all the fake crowd noise just sounded just seemed yeah. off. To me. When they were like, this is like nothing you've ever seen before. So like, it is. It's just you've piped in crowd noise. Yeah, but with like weird camera angles and certain bits. Yeah, uh, and I hate, you know, when the microphone loaded at the beginning of the match mm. and uh, the ladies and gentlemen, oh, God, this yeah. is the moment you, I thought, oh, <laughs> fuck, no. No, no, no. What is going on with this? Yeah, and Vince now has the power to raise the dead, apparently. Bring back Howard Pinkle. Yeah, um, yeah, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, but you know, um, I, I I could really do without that sort of stuff. Yeah, but I that thought the weird. wrestling match itself would have been enough to carry it as a great wrestling match uh, that people would have just enjoyed, regardless of it having the moniker of the greatest wrestling show, re- re- wrestling match of all time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, to start off with um, Apollo Cruz, US champion, which is a good thing. Glad he's finally getting. Uh, yeah, that's, see, that's one of the good things that's come from. All of this, you know, it's the resurgence of Apollo Crews, but I, I fear that that might change now because obviously, have you seen that um, Paul Heyman has now been relieved of his duties on Raw? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, for that's... pushing the wrong people is one of the uh, one of the reasons cited. But all the, uh, but I like all the people he's been pushing. I like yeah, Apollo Crews, always have but... Andrade, uh, Angel Garza. Yeah, and, you know, Alistair Black has been featured really prominently, mm, and Buddy Murphy. Yeah. So who are we going to get pushed instead? Hmm. Also, we Lashley? Don't like I mean, I don't mind Lashley. Lashley is fine, but he's not. You know, he's not a new guy. He's been around forever. He's not. I, like, I don't um, understand what Vince wants. Austin I don't Theory. understand who he wants pushing. Hmm. I think Austin Theory is like a really good guy. I really hope to continue pushing him. He's got a bright future. I think. Yeah, I think Austin Theory is good. I think Especially the fact they've got him with Seth, I think that probably helps a lot. Yeah, big time. Uh, that will help his cause a lot in the eyes of Vince. Hmm. Um. But it's definitely a standout for me. Um. But yeah, as far as how, what I think of what's back down, I think it's definitely gone better in the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I've really been enjoying, uh, I've really been enjoying both shows to be fair. Um, yeah, yeah, I've been really enjoying uh, Bailey as you know, as a heel more so now. Needs to definitely go yeah, into a role more. I think 
Bailey's definitely been one of the standouts mm. of this this whole thing. She's been she's been really really good. She's fit into this role perfectly, yeah. and she's been really really good. And another person who I think has really lifted um, their game since this whole thing is Zelina Vega. Yeah, she's, she's really coming to her own as um, a valet in a time where valets and managers really aren't a thing. Yeah, no, it's good to see that. You know, I didn't go back. Yeah, and someone yeah, else. Uh, as well, I think who's done really well, which is surprising to me, was MVP. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that actually. Yeah, it was uh, especially last night uh, at Backlash. Although he's done a good, good job as a manager, for sure. Yeah, I think so too. And he, he fits that role really well because Lashley's mm. not a great speaker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think um, you know having MVP with Lashley is a really, really smart move, and especially if you do plan on putting a championship on Bobby Lashley going forward. Yeah. Uh, I think he's more likely to have the United States Championship than the World Championship at the minute. Yeah, that makes sense. But now I would like MVP. Yeah. When, he, when he first came back, I was like, okay, MVP's fine, but I'm a bit weird. Uh, but now it's coming, you know, it's coming to his own a bit. I was like, okay, yeah, MVP's... Mm. I, rem- I remember well. why I like MVP. Yeah, yeah, big time. Really good talker. So um, I'm glad to see um, MVP back in you know that role. I never thought I would be asked about seeing MVP back, but he's adding so much to Raw every Monday. Mm. Uh, that you know, you, you really you can't fault him. No, no, I like him a lot. Um, yeah, NXT as well. It's worth mentioning is um, still yeah, NXT's been great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's never been bad. Um, yeah, this I think this week's NXT, the one that just gone, uh, was one of my favorite episodes in recent memory mm. uh, in terms of sort of the the, the area that we're currently in. Yeah, big time. Right, in terms of performance center crowd and stuff. How good so is, I thought uh, the crowd got it right this week. Like the performance center crowd, I thought they did really well. I said full sale, isn't it? But yeah, I think the full sale crowd of performance center people did a really good job of making it sound like a real show. Yeah, definitely. How, how good is uh, Killian Cross's entrance, by the way? Oh God, yeah, <laughs> so good. Killian Cross. Um, what his name is? I can't remember. Carrying Cross. Carrying Cross. That's the one. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, Carrying Cross. Yeah. Um, but no, I I think he's, a, he's got a big future him as well. Oh God, yeah. I mean, I think he's going to be the. Um, he's either. Not going to win the NXT Championship and come to Raw, hmm. or he's going to win the NXT Championship and Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era come up. Yeah, I think if anyone's going to be Adam Cole, it's going to be him. Yep. But yeah, I love his entrance. I like Scarlet a lot. Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> creepy. Yeah, me too. I'm a big fan of her. Fan <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's great. <laughs> um, again, as a ballet, she's uh, no along with Zena, Zena Baylor, uh, <laughs> Selena Vega. Um, yeah, it's good to see more ballets around. Yes, definitely, yeah. Mm. Um, it's definitely, you know, something that's being brought back to a degree. I mean, Scarlet's mm. definitely that as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, th- there's, a, there's a lot of good. And some of WWE's best working years has come from, you know, having to force f- force themselves to be more creative. Yeah. During this time, because they've just had to be. Because they, they, otherwise, I think maybe it would have died a little bit on its ass. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Um, got any uh, any standouts from NXT? I love some of the newer guys. Do you think uh, might be big going forwards, other than Cameron Cross? Um, I like Jake Atlas a lot. Oh, yeah. I think he's good. Um, I, I enjoy this new stable that um, Phantasma has mm, just really put together with um, Wacky and Wild and um, the other guy. Yeah, got the name. Um, Hector, I know what's his name. I can't remember his name. Either way, um, he is good. Yeah, I think what seeing that. Somebody who I always thought was good, but never got a real. He always used to lose. Yeah, but yeah. I think that that that's going to be quite exciting going forward. Yeah, every time. I'm happy to see uh, Drake Maverick as well. Yeah, again to, to uh, keep his job. And uh, yeah, what do you think about that? Um, I think that making the storyline out of it was a bit. Strange, especially considering it was a real thing that happened to, you know, a mm-hmm. lot of people genuinely lost their job to it. Um, that seems strange, but I thought they did a good job of telling a story. Um, and, you know, get people behind uh, Drake Maverick. Cause people didn't know if, that, if like, he was going to keep his job or if he was going to be gone after this tournament. Yeah. Um, I, certainly, I was certainly invested in it. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to see Drake keep his job because, you know, he's genuinely a decent wrestler. Oh, he's a, he's a really good wrestler, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think... Um, I didn't really have a problem with it, if I'm yeah. being honest. I mean, because, you know, the um, the video that he did when he was upset about being released was, you know, 100% real. Yeah. 
You know, you'd have to be the world's greatest actor <laughs> to to be able to put on a performance like that. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I thought, you know, it, it was it was devastating, and people rallied behind him, which obviously you know made WWE take some sort of notice. And you know, yeah, they used it to their advantage and turned it into a storyline, but they turned it into a successful storyline. Mm. When you do these things and you fuck it up. <laughs> Uh, you know that's when you sort of question it but they did this and it was very successful and you know it had a really feel good end to it well, it yeah. was emotional when triple h came out and gave him the contract and he was you know in he was you know he was emotional and triple h like was like you deserve it and all this sort of stuff um i, I loved it i thought yeah. it was executed to you know perfection really yeah no, i agree um yeah he's gonna, uh, he's gonna have some good matches going forward for sure Definitely, but I'm excited by uh, Phantasma and his group. Um, you know, I like the idea of the Cruiserweight division on NXT as well. I think yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, I feel like we maybe need to sort of... I mean, I know that Dijakovic is heading up to Raw. Oh, uh, yeah. Matt, Riddle uh, Matt Riddle's headed to SmackDown this week. Whoa. Would love to see him in a feud with AJ Styles over the IC title. Oh, God, I'd yes. love that. Yes, please. Fuck it, Vince. Yeah, please, please, please. <laughs> um, I think we need to see Johnny Gargano, uh, Tommaso Ciampa, and maybe Undisputed Era move on. Yeah. Um, what do you think of uh... for a new crop of people? Because obviously, you know, Karrion Cross is going to be the main event of, you know, NXT for a while now. Yeah, I would say. Big time. Um, what do you think of uh, Gargano's heel turn? Yeah, I like it. I yeah. like it. I wasn't sure at first. I was like, okay, this is a bit out of nowhere. Um, but now it's uh, not gone on a little bit. I'll kind of see. You know, I get. I'm, I'm warming up to it. I think we're. I think it really works for him and Candice. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, it I'm really works. I like too. it a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think it's I think it's a good turn for him. I think it's a good change of character, a good change of pace for him as a character as well, uh, or as a performer. It, you know, it shows that he can literally do it all. Yeah. I mean, awesome. Gargano is one of, the, one of the most well-rounded performers in all of wrestling, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I, I feel the same about Tommaso Ciampa as well. Yeah. Um, Ciampa's been somewhat... Um, vocal about not wanting to go to the main roster um, because because you know, we've seen so many people go to the main roster and then just not get used and mm-hmm. yeah I so, think that's understandable yeah yeah I think it will stay in NXT for a while hopefully Gorgano will as well at least while it's a heel it has, has a little like heel run uh, yeah man, I mean I, th- I just think some of them you know could do with moving uh, moving up a little bit give give people more of a give, you know give people like Cameron Grimes Mm, really who I'm a huge fan of. Me too. Big time. Um, give him that. You know, you 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 know, you, you Gargano moves out, uh, goes to Raw or SmackDown or wherever, and he can be great there with Candice. Mm. But then you bring Cameron Grimes into the main event scene in NXT and make him more prominent, and you know, you've got another great heel to fill that void. True. Very true. Um, the, the most confusing one for me is Finn Balor. I, I still don't really understand what his position is. I love him, Mello. Uh, I think he's doing a good job. I think he's just there to make um, other guys look good. Um, basically, um, I like his character. I like his more, like a more serious character, even though we can't mm-hmm. make up his mind if it's a face or a heel. Um, yeah. I don't want to by them about that, to be fair. But, yeah, I like him a lot. I, I think he's, as I say, he's there to look make others look good, and I think he'll have his time um, eventually. I think he'll be in the future. Again? Yeah, I think he'll be champion again at some point. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think the landscape of NXT is always fairly bright. I mean, I think the women's division is awesome at the minute. You know, yeah, there's so yeah. many, uh, there's so many good women on the roster at the minute. I mean, you know, Shotzi Blackheart, Tegan Knox, Dakota Kai. You know, really now coming into their own and starting to um, just just starting to show something that they weren't before. You know, whereas before you had the real standouts of the NXT women's division. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it was sort of like, oh, it's okay, but then. You know, you start, these people are, you know, Shotzi's come in from uh, Evolve. And then, you know, obviously Rhea Ripley was there for a bit. And I'm not sure, sure whether she's sort of going to stay in NXT or go to Raw or whatever. Hmm. Um, but it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, um, I think it's looking very bright in terms of the women's division. I think it's looking bright in terms of the men's division as well. It's, it, you know, NXT's always got a really good crop of people coming through. Yeah, it's so good. Um, and the ooh, ratings are getting closer every week as well. That's not, you know, I don't care about that. No. But, you know, it obviously means something to somebody 
you know, sitting in their underpants eating <laughs> uh, what's it's out of their belly button. You know, <laughs> it cares to those people. You know, he's got a, like a fucking AEW t-shirt on, just <laughs> white pants. <laughs> Uh, he matters to those people, them nerds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say it didn't bother me at all. Um, what do you think if of? You uh, care about range? You're a fucking nerd. I don't care. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, what do you think of uh, anyway? House as well. That was pretty recently. Oh, that was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the, I thought it had some great wrestling on it. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the most exciting takeover, but no. I think that plays a lot into not having a crowd there because the energy of the NXT fans, um, they really bring a lot to the takeover shows. Yeah, definitely. and if you haven't got that there, it, 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 you know it does take something away. You know, yeah. Um, the weakest match on the card for me was the uh, the cinematic match between Adam Cole and Velveteen Dream. Yeah, they kind of bothered that a bit um, because uh, Velveteen Dream just wasn't going to win it. I don't think. Um, yeah, and I don't, I don't think, think a I don't think it's right to keep him on NXT now either. I think it's probably time for him to move on. He's another one that can move on. Yeah, because not so much lesser him really. He's yeah. I think the one person you keep in NXT for now is Keith Lee. I, don't get, I think when, um, I think he's got main roster written all over him. Oh yeah. I think he will definitely be a future WWE champion, or at least he could be. But I think once he, I think he, what he, um, or what I would love to see is a feud between him and Karrion Cross over the NXT Championship, mm. uh, maybe over the back end of this year. That'd be awesome. And you know, let Cameron Grimes, Finn Balor, um, you know, and a few others, you know. Um, Damian Priest and a few others, you know, battle over the North American Championship. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, Finn Balor's, I think, challenged to uh, Keith Lee to uh, a match, didn't he? Like, last week. That'd be a good he match. did, actually, yeah. You're yeah, right. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, I could see that. So, I could see Keith Lee losing the title to him. Mm. And yeah. then Keith Lee could then elevate himself into that main event position. Um, you know, if Adam Cole was to lose the championship to Karrion Cross. Carrying Cross would then need a challenger because I, th- I would anticipate Undisputed Era moving up as a group because none of them have belts, mm. um, which I'd be fine with as long as they dominate and keep together. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And then you could have Keith Lee feuding with Carrying Cross over the NXT Championship, which would just be fucking awesome. I love yeah, that. It's so good. Speaking of standouts as well, Dexter Loomis. <laughs> it's oh, so good. I love Dexter it so much. Loomis is fantastic. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, um, I thought that match was brilliant on, on NXT this week, him versus Adam Cole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, the way he's just like freaking out, body strong as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was awesome. So I, I liked him in. To be honest, I liked him in Impact as well. Oh, did you in Impact um, as well? Because yeah, Dexter Loomis played a character in Impact called Samuel Shaw. Oh. Right. And it was a similar sort of uh, stalkerish character, and I thought he did a great job there as well. Mm. But um, he looks he looks the part, you know. He looks he looks creepy, <laughs> um, but he gets it done in the ring as well, which is and this yeah. I mean, like I said, man, NXT has a very bright bright future yeah big time yeah cool yeah right so let's run down the backlash uh, results and what we thought of that cool okay so we had uh first match on the kickoff show was uh Avalo cruz versus andrade yeah um which i didn't actually see because i forgot about the kickoff show um yeah i haven't seen it i should really go back and watch it oh you've not seen it <laughs> no no um i know who won i know Avalo cruz won um yeah yeah he's got any music so you know they like him <laughs> exactly yeah um, and Kevin Owens was there as well, wasn't he, on commentary? Yeah, he was wearing a tie. Nice. <laughs> um, uh, over his Kevin Owens t-shirt. Oh, <laughs> really? Awesome. Um, yeah, I need to go back and watch that. It was a good match. Really good back and forth match. I mean, these two, you know, they're, they're very capable. Like, they're, they're really compatible, like um, Alistair Black and Buddy Murphy. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, super actually. compatible. And... Uh, I like that Apollo is getting the shine that he definitely deserves because he's great. Yeah, and it's good that they're finally realizing that, or at least Heyman realized that. So he'll probably lose the U.S. title tonight to Bobby Lashley. Um, <laughs> but I th- yeah, there was a really good back and forth match. Uh, Angel Garza got involved, which led to Kevin Owens getting involved and stunning Angel Garza on the outside of the ring. Nice, and which led to the distraction and Apollo won with that like backdrop power bomb that he does. Awesome. Good match. Good. And, you know, Kevin Owens has got to be in line for US title match at some point. So, you know, he's one of the favourites there. So I I see him with that belt at some point too. Yeah. I love Kevin Owens. Again. Yeah. He had a great Good match. As well last time Good as well. match. Yeah. Great match. Um, awesome. Then the first match on the main card was uh, the women's tag team match with Bailey mm-hmm. and Sasha versus uh, Listen Gross and the Iconics. Um, yeah. Which is decent enough. There were a few uh, sloppy moments, a few, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of bosses, which is a shame. Um, but otherwise, okay, it's decent enough. 
Yeah, you know, I thought it was a fun little short match. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't overly long. Um, you know, they didn't outstay the welcome, but I thought what they did is... Um, uh, yeah, I thought they. I just thought they put on a really well-paced triple threat tag team match. And what I do like, which is something that WWE doesn't do really that often, is actually have a triple threat tag team match as a triple threat. Yeah, that makes sense. I like that actually. It, makes um, sense and that, like it works match. so much better. Mm. It gives you a much better dynamic, and it, yeah, it just works better. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, it's good that they're making like actual tag teams called Women's Division. It's not that's like a title that's hidden away and people forget mm-hmm. about. Um, yeah, I feel in, like, like finally the women's tag team title might start to be featured in a better way. Yeah, that's uh, they're going to get defended on uh, NXT this week against uh, they are Sochi and Sochi Blackheart and uh, Tegan Knox. Tegan Knox. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. It'd be good to see uh, Bailey and Sasha back on NXT. Yeah, but you know, um, Bailey is Bailey and Sasha. Um, they're now the right people to. Um, carry those belts mm. because they're heels um and they're going to win in shitty ways and they're going to be arrogant because bailey's the women's champion and they've got both belts and <laughs> we've been saying this for years now right but this is finally going to lead to sasha versus bailey down the line <laughs> yeah i reckon SummerSlam might be uh, no no longer than that they need really? to i think drag it out longer keep them going keep let them have the women's tag team championships for a while and then make it mean something when they eventually lose them yeah, that makes sense. I'll be okay with yeah. that. No, they're great. I love them both. I love them. As he has heels, like Bailey especially, he's like really coming to her own uh, recently. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we'll to see more of that. Yeah, definitely. And that was, that was a cool little match. Uh, the right result, too early to take the belts off. Oh yeah, big time. Um, yeah, good to see the I- Iconics back again. Um, glad they're going to be sticking around for a while, hopefully. Um, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Um, yeah. Ne- yeah, so the next match after that was uh, Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. Out to Jeff through mm-hmm. urine in Seamus' face. Yeah, Jeff needs to drink some water. <laughs> yeah. The, the colour of that piss was outrageous, <laughs> right? Was a bit. You go to you go when at work there's posters on the toilet walls that like give you an indication of like healthy we. Oh, really? <laughs> like if you're drinking enough water, obviously your your piss will be a nice clear colour. Mm. Jeff Hardy clearly drinking too much Powerade <laughs> and full fat. Red coke yeah. and pissing pure orange it's pretty much there you go yeah you're, you're like, that's a decent sized bottle of water you'll mm. have you'll have the same color we yeah as the water not as of jeff hardy who clearly <laughs> drinks no water uh yeah so that was a weird thing that happened uh what do you think yeah. of the whole storyline between you know with jeff getting you know running over elias supposedly more drunk uh, i could do him. without it yeah i, 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 I think it's classless it's a bit like I see what they were going for, and it's just, I just think it just uh, works well. I don't think it was booked poorly. Um, yeah, I like the feud. I don't like the storyline. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I thought um, the match was good. Yeah, it was alright. Jeff's. I feel Jeff isn't quite. Um, hasn't got quite got his legs beneath him right now. I think it's like still got a bit of ring, a ring rust. Um, just being slower than yeah, usual. Yeah, I can see that. that makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. well, I do like Jeff. I always, always like Jeff. I do think he'll you know continue to have good matches down the line. I look forward to seeing more of him uh, going forward. Yeah, I think he'll go to AEW once his WWE contract expires. I'm not sure how long he's got left of it, but um, I mean, if they're going to keep doing garbage like this with him, <laughs> why would he renew and stay? I don't, yeah. you know, there's no, um, I didn't think he'd lose. So that was a surprise yeah. to me. Yeah, me too. Um, but I think what it does mean is that this feud continues um, through to SummerSlam, probably. Yeah. You done the one before SummerSlam? Yeah, yeah, there is, but I think this will carry on. This is Extreme Rules in July. Uh, that was it, yeah. And then a SummerSlam in August. So I sense. think what will happen is um, Jeff Hardy and Sheamus will continue through SummerSlam. Okay, that makes sense. And Jeff um, Hardy will get his, his big, vic, you know, victorious moment. Yeah. Cool, I'll be okay with that. Hopefully. I need to give back his, uh, his, uh, his better interest theme. No yeah, I, mean, yeah I think so too. Don't give his Hardy Boys team. He said he was coming back as well. Yeah, he mentioned it on some interview. It would be the nice. Bump. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was, that was an awesome team. Great team. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, so we had uh, the War Women's Championship match with Asuka and Nia Jax. Uh-huh. Hmm, Nia Jax. She's been in... Uh, <sighs> it's inter- been an interesting, interesting few matches, hasn't she? Mm, yeah, she's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely been... I don't know what the word is to use. Um, 
I don't think she is suitable for that level of professional wrestling. Yeah, this like since coming back, she's already injured. Mm. What Kyrie and very almost very Twice. almost seriously injured her. Yeah, um, it's yeah, just it's reckless. A- it's care- it's just careless stuff. I mean, you know, she's she's a she's a she's a bigger athlete. Mm. Okay, and you need to know your strength. You yeah. can't just go flinging tiny people like Kyrie around by her head into ob- uh, into objects. You, yeah, you, you just And if you're going to do it, you know, uh, try and do it in a safe way. Yeah. I mean, apparently they, they've completely banned the buckle bomb now after, you know, knife threw a skull into the corner. Um, yeah. Which is a good thing because it's a pretty dangerous move. Um, well, yeah. I mean, Seth's injured Sting, Finn Balor. Oh, yeah. Uh um, yeah, she's nice to injured a lot of people. Like, she injured Bailey, uh, Ember Moon is still out, uh, broke Becky's face. Was that Nia as well? Um, I think so, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jesus so, Christ, man. <laughs> I yeah, I feel like they need to take her off TV for a while, put her back at, like, in the performance centre, just have a, you know, I don't know. It's only, it's only need to be done because she's not main roster ready right now. No, I don't think so either. I think with, with Nia, I think what you have to do is just probably end her contract. Yeah. It seems harsh. That'd probably be a better thing to do. Yeah, because she does have potential. She's just... Hi. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> There's Kay in the background there. <laughs> Kay's, uh, Kay's got opinions on Nia Jack. She's not a big fan. Yeah. Um, as I say, she has a potential, but she's just not living up to it right now. She's coming across as lazy. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say that's probably... I would say that's probably fair. Um if, if I'm being, I don't think she wants to be there. I just don't think she wants to do it. Yeah, I just wasn't making jokes about it on Twitter. Like, you no know, when she pushed over the like little um, stand mm. on was it a moment of bliss, something like that. Yes. Uh, to make, uh, but, no, was it the Kevin Owens show? No, it wasn't. Was it something like that? One of those. It's probably a moment of bliss. That makes sense. Yeah, it's made put it on Twitter saying, "Oh, it's out for like three to six months or something like that." But that's not funny. That's you know, people have legitimately been injured by you, and you're making mm. light of it. That's not. That's not cool. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm really not a huge fan of her. I, I never really have been either. And no. you know, her current run is doing herself is doing no favors to making me a more of a fan of her. Yeah. Also ironic because she called out um, Wanda Rousey on injuring uh, Alexa Bliss. Now since then she's injured, <laughs> almost injured. Um, <laughs> almost everyone twice. she's <laughs> crossed paths with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this match wasn't amazing. Nia no, was again very sloppy during the ring in the ring I thought mm-hmm. uh, and quite depressingly it ended in double count out so we're probably going to see it again mm-hmm. um, Asuka's too good for this uh, Asuka's really good and she's been one of the standouts of this you know recent time as well Big I think time. she's been awesome yeah so good and she's rightfully the Raw Women's Champion mm. but I don't need this feud no I don't need it at all uh, I hate double count outs as well it's such a cop out bullshit ending to a match yeah. plus there was no need for it to end in a double count out yeah exactly just who knows it's weird it was a good match until then as well yeah oh, I was enjoying right. it yeah but double I count know. outs that sucks but at least Oscar didn't lose I guess yeah that's a good thing I don't think is definitely not going to have that championship not anytime soon <laughs> imagine, if she, imagine if she won Jesus Christ the internet would have melted down yeah. <laughs> I would have melted down yeah I would have melted down <laughs> as well yeah could do uh, without it yeah um, then we had another championship match. We had the Universal Champion Braun Strowman versus both The Miz and John Morrison, uh, which I enjoyed. Before before we talk about this match, <laughs> let's talk about how hilarious that music video. Oh is. my god, it was so good. I loved it so I much. was. Oh, you know, what? I thought it was really funny. You yeah. know, I could really do without them singing and rapping and stuff. But uh, this sort of like Lonely Island weird <laughs> gimmick they've got going on at the minute is actually quite amusing. Oh, so good. I was so disappointed when it got interrupted by Braun. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, it was yeah, so me- good. <laughs> I hope they put it, was, it, like, it was really making me laugh, and I, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I'm going to put a full version on YouTube because it needs it. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it's it's just awesome. It's so good. Um, but yeah, I thought it matched really good as well. Uh, yeah, I did. I thought, have... I thought it was well paced. Yeah, Marston's got um, I... insane, like you know, more flippy flippy shit as they call it, but oh. it is insane. It's an insane athlete. Oh, John Morrison is is I think he's one of those once in a lifetime athletes or once in a generation athletes. Mm, definitely, because he you know he's not a young man anymore. No, and you know he flies around the ring, and it's everything he does is flawless as well. Yeah, amazing. Um, 
I would have lo- I would love to see him as the Universal Champion. Yeah, me too. Um, unfortunately, while he's with the Miz, that won't happen. Yeah, they'll, they'll wake up soon. Especially considering what happened in the match. Yeah. Yeah, but I thought yeah I enjoyed the match. I thought it was I thought it was good. Yeah, we enjoyed it. Um, so obviously John Morrison had uh, Braun pinned, and then the Miz pulled him off because he you know obviously wants to be the champion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then obviously that led to Braun uh, pinning Morrison. Yeah. Um, no, I really enjoyed it. I didn't have, didn't have high expectations going in, but no, it ended up being a really good match. Yeah, uh, and I think they're the best ones, the ones you don't have high expectations of, and then they turn out to be, oh, okay, actually, this is really good. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that was definitely one of those those kind of matches. I mean, yeah, it wasn't the right time to take the championship off Braun. He's only had it for a couple of months, and uh, I think I, I would have been disappointed if they had taken it off him. Yeah, it would have been too soon. But it was a good match. Yeah, definitely. Loved it. Um. Cool. Then we had the WWE Championship, uh, Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley. Yeah, which, another again, good match. Yeah, again, and not, again, not a match I had huge expectations for, but yeah, they killed it. Really yeah, and you know what? It, the match was exactly what it should have been, and that was two big men really going at it, like really beating the crap out of each other. Yeah, I like the start as well. You using just... their strengths to, well, their 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 advantage, mm. and I thought it, I thought it was very good, and they, they did it really well. And Kaylee completely called. The finish of the match, like even before it. Oh, really? With Lana? Because Lana get involved. Because, you know, Lana's been in the background of this storyline. And it just made sense for her to get involved in some way. And uh, this will probably lead to the breakup of Lashley and Lana and hopefully the uh, removal of Lana from TV. Oh, uh, yeah. While. Yeah, I think so. She's um, adding nothing to the product at the minute at all. Nothing. Yeah. Um, it's also weird that she's still around considering we have got let go. It just feels weird. Mm-hmm. Um, it does feel weird, yeah. But, I miss yeah, Rusev from Rusev Day. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> um, but no, we like this match. I like to start with Bobby Lashley attacking before the match. Um, yep. Yeah, and MVP as well, being at the side. Pretty cool. And Yeah, all, all around it was, it was really good. And um, again, you're right. It's another one of those matches that exceeds the low expectations that you would have of it going in. Yeah, and also elevated Bobby Lashley as well. Even though he lost, it elevated him to like another level. Yes, um, he, I looked, agree. he looked good in the beat. Yeah, because it, it was a, it was like a, a screwy type finish as well. So it wasn't like he lost completely clean. Yeah, uh, he lost because of you know outside interference from Lana and MVP and stuff. So um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was good. Yeah, me too. Awesome. Then we had a very weird. I didn't even call it a match, a thing between the Street Profits and Viking Raiders. Surely and you laughed, though. I, oh, it's funny, yeah. <laughs> I laughed a lot. Yeah, me too. It was very, very funny. Especially with uh, Akira Tazara turning up with ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it was so weird. But that's uh, what I was talking about. I mean, like having to sort of like think outside the box with, with, with stuff and getting a bit more creative. I mean... Yeah, this is... I mean, I saw that um, one of the Revival tweeted. I can't remember which one it was. They're both the same. But... Um, <laughs> You know, one of them tweeted, yes, we know, yes, we're happy, or something like that, like um, tag team wrestling's a joke in WWE or whatever. <laughs> um, but it, it wasn't done for that. It was done because it was funny to do it. Yeah, like, like I said before, wrestling doesn't, didn't have to be super serious 100% of the time. Yes, no. you can have these amazing like tag team matches um, you know, take place. But at the mm-hmm. same time, you could also have just, like, the silly comedy things every now and then. Um, it's like it's not going to be every, a joke every single time, every single week. It's like eventually they'll have a match and it'll be a good match. No, eventually they'll have a match and it'll be a really good match. Yeah. And um, you know, I I I thought it was hilarious. I love the bit with, with the turkey leg and he like <laughs> like pulled it out of the bush. Kaylee's in the background nodding there. <laughs> but um, you know, we, we were laughing. We were laughing so hard, and you know, I just thought it was a lot of fun. I mean, yeah, you know what? There's going to be people out there that hated it. That's bad. And you know, don't understand. Think there's no place for it. But you know, people are too miserable. People, you know, need to accept a little bit of fun. Yeah, I mean, I get it. If that's not and, not your kind of thing, then naturally you're not, not going to like it. Um, but no, I thought it was really funny. I was like, yeah, I was, I was laughing a lot <laughs> during that. Um, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was brilliant. I just funny. thought it was so stupid <laughs> and just so utterly ridiculous that you know it, it worked. Yeah, and it's I mean, Montez Ford is a superstar. Oh yeah, big time. It's amazing. Montez Ford is the is could be as big as the Rock in terms of. Uh, he's that charismatic and he's mm. good in the ring as well super athletic really good wrestler great on the mic and he's just hilarious so he could be now uh, the reason i compare him to the rock is because that i feel like he has them sort of mannerisms yeah that the rock has but um yeah i thought i, I thought it was really funny yeah me too um 
Yeah. It didn't even end. Did they all get eaten? <laughs> yeah, I think they all ended up in the dumpster, didn't they? And then by the monster, yeah, the weird <laughs> tentacle. <laughs> or the alligator or whatever it was. Yeah. It was awesome. Uh, but yeah, that match would be... I think that match would happen more. Oh, that will wait yeah. until um, Extreme Worlds. One or the other. Yeah. Um, yeah, the cool, that was a lot of fun. And then, we, of course, we had uh, the <laughs> best match of all time. Uh, uh, what was it? It was the <laughs> match ever. Oh, okay. Um, and what did you think of it? I mean, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about the piped in crowd noise. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that. Um, but I thought as a match, it was it was good. I liked it. I thought as a wrestling match, I did think it was great. Yeah. Was it the greatest? Obviously, that's subjective. Yeah. No, it wasn't the greatest match of all time. <laughs> of course not. Um, you know, but it, you know, I I tweeted out that I didn't think it would even be the best match on Backlash, but I think it probably was. Yeah, I think so. So I'm willing to admit story. defeat there, but I thought Backlash had some really good wrestling. Yeah, it's definitely a solid. So, um, but I thought I liked the spotted match, like you know, using uh, other wrestlers finisher finishes. We yeah. saw the angle slam, rock bottom stuff like that. Yeah, uh, ankle lock. Yeah, ankle lock. Enjoyed all that all that stuff. Um, I like yeah, it's like it went on for a good long time. I like the finish as well with uh, Randy putting out the punt kick, which I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I enjoyed that he won dirty as well. Like so, low blow followed oh, by the punt. Yeah, and I thought I thought that worked really well because I think we'll get the greatest wrestling match ever too. Yeah, I agree. But I, I thought it was good. Yeah, I, you know, I, I again, I didn't have great expectations going into it. Mm. Um, I don't think they needed all that presentation stuff. Uh, yeah, that one that one on a bit long, didn't it? No, I mean like the. Oh, yeah, um, I see what you mean. Like, yeah, yeah, the uh... with the, the the crowd noise and all that sort of stuff. I just don't think it was necessary. Um, yeah, because I think it took away from what was a great wrestling match to a degree. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, it was very distracting the crowd noise. I found like it clearly wasn't <laughs> from the building. Um, really considering they had normal crowd noise the rest of the time. Yeah, some of the cuts Strange. were stupid as well because there mm. was one part. So you could tell the commentary was done in post. I was going to say that, actually, yeah, because you could see them talking in the background, but it didn't match up to who was talking. Yeah, um, there was one part where Samoa Joe was talking on commentary and he was sat there looking at his notes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Weird. So, <laughs> they could have done a better you job know, just, They need to do that stuff better. Yeah. I mean, that's attention to detail that a massive company like WWE probably shouldn't miss. But um, overall, you know what? I thought it was a really good match. I thought the ending was really good, and I thought mm. they told a really great story during the course of the match. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, people were probably more intrigued because it did have that greatest wrestling match ever build. Um, but maybe that made them deliver even more. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, Brush, you know, brings out the best in people sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it was a great match. To... There was a lot of praise for it um, on the internet, okay. both during and after the match itself. Um, and I thought, yeah, I thought, you know, I did think it was good. I, I thought it was a great wrestling match. Yeah, I did too. I mean, enjoyed it. Some unnecessary things in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw it in camera cuts as well, like when they're locked up, the camera pointing up at them, which is weird. Yeah. There clearly wasn't the camera there. Um, <laughs> but no, I liked it. Really good match. I enjoyed it. It was good, yeah. I mean, again, it's nice to see them trying something different. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to enjoy you... these like cinematic matches. Um, yeah, I have too. Because as you say, yeah, it's I different. A lot. Not known to see it very often. No, they've never really saw it before. Um, at least very rarely. Um, but no, I like it. Yeah, and I think they could... I mean, there's no way that they won't make the most of Extreme Rules and have a cinematic match there. Mm, yeah, big time. So they definitely will. Yeah. But, I, I yeah, I mean, I, I like that they're doing different things. Yeah, me too. No I mean, thing. yeah, people might have took the piss out of the greatest show thing, myself included, <laughs> but it very likely put eyes on the product. Yeah. Definitely. And at the end of the day, that's exactly what they wanted, and they probably got exactly what they wanted. So, yeah. Um, overall, uh, what would you give Backlash if you were going to grade it, or if you were going to use a soundbite? <laughs> I would say was that, it. I'd say that it was <laughs> that uh, I'd ever seen. Um, <laughs> um, but no, out of ten, I would give it uh, a seven point five out of ten. Hmm. Better than expected. Um, I'm I'm going to give it eight out of ten. Okay, that makes sense. Because I um, I, th- I thought it had good wrestling on it, and I thought the the stories that were told during the matches matched up with what we 
what we've been seeing in the build towards those matches. So they actually delivered. A lot of the time, you know, things don't deliver. Yeah. But um, this time, I, I do actually think that the pay-per-view delivered on the build. Yeah, me too. Um, the women's tag team match was good, but it wasn't probably as good as it could have been. Mm-hmm. Um, Asuka versus Nijax was kind of, yeah. Um, Simmons versus Jeff Hardy was, was good, but again, not, not amazing. But everything else I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, I just wanted to go back and watch Apollo Crews and Virgil Andrade. Definitely did so that, sure yeah. Because um, it, it was really good. Plus, you know, I think it deserves a higher score just for Viking Raiders and Street Profits bit. <laughs> it go. was awesome. Yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing uh, what Extreme Wars brings in a few months. Yeah. Or, like, a few definitely. weeks, I say. Um, it's a month's time, isn't it? So the 19th yeah. of July, I think? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, that was that's Backlash. And I think that's pretty much... We've been going for a while. Yeah, long time. Um, yeah, I think this was the uh, podcast episode we've ever done. Yeah, I, I think it is. I think we deserve a round of applause. I think we do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, I forget, what, what colour do you get when you mix black and white? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> um, I'm waiting to use that. Uh, so, so, yeah. Have you, been, the, have you been saving that the entire episode? I have, yeah. I was trying to, I was trying to get it in somewhere. Get in. <laughs> get out of that. Right. Uh, <laughs> stupid. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's a, that's a podcast. Yeah, that's the podcast. <laughs> we've, we've done a podcast. It's a nice long one, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Mm, I hope you've, uh, you know got the games and graps fixed that you've been craving during lockdown yes we will be back next week with another one yes definitely probably definitely Talk about probably. all the interesting stuff that's happened on raw smackdown and nxt mm. and, and when the maybe. jizz has been wiped off twitter <laughs> uh, we'll probably talk about some gaming news as well yeah awesome good stuff we didn't talk about the last of us reviews they've had good reviews uh yeah lots of 10 out of 10s um lot, lot would of... you say it's the i say it's probably the game uh we've had in a while yeah um, i think so too i see a lot of like pan boys saying oh they've been paid maybe they've been paid off because the workers get 10 out of 10 blah, 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 blah. no that's stupid no, no, they get 10 out of 10s because they're amazing games yeah exactly yeah People are so yeah so um i hope you've enjoyed the this week's episode of the podcast yeah you can find us on all the podcast services find this in video form on youtube mm-hmm and we'll get it on our Facebook page as well. Mm-hmm. And you can go and follow us on all the social medias. Yep, yep. At Games and we Graps. Are, we're doing more stuff on Facebook these days. Yeah. You can go and follow us that. on Facebook, which is uh, the Games and Graps podcast, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, we're on Twitter, at Games and Graps. Mm-hmm. And we're on Instagram. Guess what the handle is? Uh, at Sunny and Finn. No, it's at Games and Graps. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, and of course, um, YouTube is youtube.com forward slash games and graps, and it's twitch.tv forward slash games and graps. As well. Literally everywhere. Yeah, literally everywhere. We, we are... com slash games and graps. Um. Yeah, <laughs> just for if you, you know, Pornhub forward slash games and graps, um, uh, all that, all that stuff. Only pants, we're there too. <laughs> yep. We're uh. cheek to cheek. I'm only pants. Good stuff. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, I'm Sydney. I'm Finn. And we'll see you next time. Take it easy. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Goodbye.